gentlemen, GM, good evening, good afternoon, wherever it is you're tuning in from. How are we all doing today? <laughs> guys, guys, this year, Brick by Brick is changing things up. For those who have been tuning into my spaces, know that I usually typically run two to three hour long spaces, but I was like, you know what? It's time where I break these hours up. I want to feature a lot of upcoming projects. A lot of these panelists that I'm personally fans of, um, and I'm just super, super grateful. Today, we have Second World Games as a sponsor. Shout out to Crispy Bacon. Shout out to Rec, you, um, number one. I see you in the audience. Thank you for helping me and Crispy Bacon set this up. We also have my boy Sanjay. What is going on, Sanjay? We also have the KPR team uh, representing by Future Sight Echo, my good friend, um, dude, we've been on spaces left and right this past couple of weeks, so really cool to see everyone up here again. And shout out to my two good friends, starting off with Inhuman. Man, I've been talking to this guy on DMs. I'm like, dude, when am I going to get you on a space, bro? Um, so he literally promised me that give me a time and day and he's here and look at this. This guy's living proof of the truth. Uh, Inhuman, thank you for being here. And last but not least, shout out to my co-founder, one of my favorite people in the world, Matt over at Shinsei. Right, guys, before we even begin and I proceed any further, if you want to show love and the best way to do so, right, is hitting that bottom right button, repost, like, comment, even bookmark this space, right? We have a very, very interesting title today and kind of a very broad topic, you know, build, building a better Web3. I feel like the timeline has kind of been a bit negative, right? We've been seeing a lot of projects being called out on, you know, issues and mistakes and whatnot. Um, but we, we, us as builders, us as creators in this space, we have to, we have to draw them out, right? We have to bring it out, right? And, and that's how we better Web3, right? Um, guys, I'm also giving away one heavy extraction code from Shrapnel today. And for those who don't know, Shrapnel is going to be releasing their in-game beta, um, I believe, fairly, fairly soon. Um, I have a couple spaces going on with them in the coming weeks. So stay tuned for more information about that. Um, best way to do so is literally just by reposting, liking, commenting. I'm going to choose one winner, um, someone that has completed all three things. So if you want to win an extraction code, um, highly, highly recommend doing so. Um, let me check in. Let me check in with Crispy Bacon on the behalf of Second World Games. First of all, brother, thank you for making time. Thank you for being here today. I'm going to pass this microphone to you. How are you doing? What's going on? Well, thanks to you, Bausa. It's really amazing to be on your space. I was really, really looking forward to it. So thanks a lot for for the opportunity. I'm doing great here in Spain. A little bit of a cold, <laughs> even though we have pretty good weather here. Uh, oh, man. So sorry if the voice is not the best. <laughs> All good. All good, brother. Thank you again. And, uh, you know, it's funny. I, I used to host spaces also when I'm sick, but it's so noticeable. Like, my voice just gets super nasally, and I'm like, uh, I don't know how I sound on, a, on on spaces, right? But you sound just fine. You sound just fine. I'll let you know that. <laughs> well, I look like a, I sound like a noob compared to you, but I, I can compete. <laughs> You're all good, brother. You are all good. Um, guys, really quick, just want to run through some really cool things that has happened this past week. Um, I am now an official space ambassador for Eclipse NFT they had just recently launched their Genesis collection. Um, and shout out to, oh man, I keep forgetting, Gambler. Shout out to Gambler. Shout out to Paul um, for reaching out to me and providing me with this opportunity, right? And I'm going to do a little show of Project Shinsei that I have going on with Matt. Uh, we just announced the ritual, right? The ritual is upon us. Um, stay tuned. If you want to know more about the project, just follow us or follow the Project Shinsei account, which I highly recommend. Right. And last but not least, guys, I also pinned at the very top um, the few topics that will be going on today. Right. Um, what's wrong with first come, first serve? Right. Tokenomics or Ponzionomics. Right. And then last but not least, I want to dive a little bit more into NFT founders and leadership. This is something that we talked about in the last space. Right. Um, but this is just a forever on ongoing topic. Right. However, the way I want to kick things off before I include everyone's beautiful voices in today's conversation, right, is actually by partner or sponsoring and spotlighting Second World Games. I would love to spend at least the first half of today's spaces. Um, this is going to be an hour long space. We are on turbo mode, right, guys? Okay, so Chrissy Bacon, I would love for you to take over the microphone. If you can just provide a quick, t not a quick TLDR. Let me start off with this. Who is 
Second World Games? And what made you want to build in Web3? Let's start right there. Chrissy Bacon, go ahead. Oh, that's a very philosophical question we could start with. <laughs> Welcome yeah, to my well, spaces. The hour, but let's <laughs> cut it through and be agile with it. Well, let's go. Second World Games is a game studio that has a mission. We have a mission of creating a world of entertainment that turns players into owners and decision makers, essentially. As of now, we are super, super happy because... We released early this month our first public beta launch on on the app stores. We focus on free-to-play mobile gaming. And for the past year and a half, we've been building relentlessly on the gameplay and the actual entertainment layer that we feel that is the most relevant. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, immediately off bat, I noticed in your bio, or at least in the Second World Games bio, right, uh, I see a token. I see a token here. And immediately where my mind goes to is, are you guys VC backed? Are you guys any um, partnerships with any big investment firms? Um, Crispy, go ahead. Well, to be honest, as of now, we, we raised a, a private sale on our token already a year and a half ago or wow. so. And pretty much our our investment community comes mostly from Web2 players that is interested on, on what we are building and people that in many cases have never earned that token before. So the community is really decentralized and curious about where we are headed. We haven't been very interested in, in really bringing in big uh, venture capitals at this phase, but really building out the community and and now we are ready for the token launch hopefully uh, as late as in q1 i cannot announce the date yet but we have a lot of plans already agreed on and and ready to launch some moon absolutely and please remind me you guys have a do you guys have a game out already or are we still in beta in beta test we actually have two games on the app stores already, uh, but the main production and the one we're putting the most focus on is Second World. And Second, Second World, World is essentially a city development, a strategy and competition game. Again, for, for is mobile first, although we hope to be in other platforms later on. And it has a lot of trends and dynamics from games like Clash of Clans and Clash Royale, which we personally uh, you know, love. Uh, but right. apart from that, we feel there's a lot of potential in embedding Web3 elements into this type of genre. And, and so my, my question that I want to follow up with is why why'd you guys go mobile? Do you guys see a potential as far as like market opportunity that there are more gamers or are gamers going on mobile first before they consider, you know, going PC right or desktop, whatever that is. Why did you guys go mobile? I mean, our team is especially experienced in building, uh, you know, two of our co-founders are serial entrepreneurs that have lots of experience be building digital businesses and acquiring millions of users. And then the other co-founder and myself come from a world of big tech companies, in my case, IBM, where we have a lot of experience building technology to address challenges, to solve problems. So uh, with this mindset, we understand mobile as the first principle uh, to be designed and then expand to many others because it's definitely the most accessible platform for everyone. And Web3 is also about bringing that inclusion worldwide. So we feel every, every development nowadays has to be mobile first. And once it's mobile first, it's much easier to move on to, uh, to computers and, and, and console as well. I also feel too that, you know, mobile gaming is like one of the best ways to kind of test the waters, right? See how many players, how many people are you attracting to the game initially? And then you can, I feel like you can funnel that onto other games that, you know, maybe you would then release on PC or desktop, right? Um, I love it. Love the strategy. Um, a, f a second question I have here, right? Again, if you've been paying attention to this space, um, literally, Web3 gaming projects are coming out left and right. Now, what strategy are you focusing on to make sure that Second World Games is standing out amongst everyone else, right? And that you are not falling in, you know, per se, a similar niche, the same niche as other games. What, are your, what, what is your strategy there? 
Well, we are really focusing on on the user, in this case, the player, and therefore the the community, and building the experience around it, and not having Web3 as a barrier of any kind. As of now, actually, we haven't implemented any Web3, although we have been designing it and and have it in testnet environments for for a long time. But we have made sure for the past year that uh, the gameplay and the entertainment comes first. And then once you have that engaged community uh, that loves a game, that builds up the virtual world and powers it, it's time to start, you know, decentralizing power, uh, providing uh, value to those achievers and contributors, and definitely uh, enabling all that true ownership that players are going to love once they, they are truly engaged with a game. I love that. I love that response. Um I was in a space this morning, right? And it was actually with Future Side here with, with um, KPR, right? And we were talking about Web2 activations. I'm curious on your end, um, I know you're building, you know, your target audience may be a Web3 gaming um, per se audience. Um, do you have anything in plan for the future where you could potentially activate an audience outside of this space, aka Web2? Do you have anything planned, any strategies you have towards that direction? Well, we have over 10k downloads of over the past month, and we are, which is not Thank a you. lot, you know, but we haven't really invested much on marketing yet. Uh, but we are of the very, very sure that 90% of them come from the Web2 world as of now. Uh, so the reality is that now we are going to uh, really put the focus on the Web3 community because we feel they are going to be early adopters with all the elements um, and value propositions that there are for, you know, people that understand Web3 and see the, the long-term value. But the reality is that for the past year, we have been really focusing on Web2 users. So mm. uh, now the Web3 enablements are about to begin. We have a lot of things we've been working on very hard, but we didn't want to arrive with a, with a product, in this case, a, a sort of games that are not fun enough to really be sustainable in the long run. I love it. And, and to follow up with that, right, wh what would you like to see different as far as Web3 gaming moving forward? Do you think that we're, we're technically in a way like, you know, cornering ourselves in in this little bubble? Or do you, do you think that Web3 is approaching a point where we're starting to see more of an onboarding through gamification, through these gaming projects, right? And I, and I think, again, this is why I believe Web3 gaming is going to be such a huge core pillar in the Web3 ecosystems because it makes it easy for people outside of this space to be like, hey, you know what? Like, I'm not paying attention to an NFT or a JPEG, right? This is more so on, this is a really good video game. I want to keep playing the video game, right? Where do you want to see the direction of Web3 gaming um, heading towards to? Well, what we need to understand is that entertainment in the end is much more than that in the end. Uh, I I have played my life uh, well, for many hours as a teenager. I was actually in the <laughs> in the national selection of Medal of Honor and a few other shooters wow. where I had a lot of free time and I got to learn uh, English, meet a lot of people all around the world, get passionate about technology. So I mean, gaming is much more than having some fun, you know. But what we need to understand is that a lot, a lot of people like me <laughs> in that scenario were just putting lots and lots of hours and even resources to just have fun and those uh, special moments, connections, experiences. So we are all the time thinking about the utility, uh, which is definitely important uh, when it comes to Web3. But when we are building games, we cannot forget what is the most important element, you know? And if that is accomplished, imagine the biggest AAA, uh, AAA games or the games with more users at the moment, if they enable all these benefits, which some of them are going to start doing very, very soon, uh, the market is going to explode just like it did when it became free to play. And uh, many studios were skeptical of losing a lot of market by doing so. And in the end, the, the industry, you know, just went W, you know. So I think uh, something like this needs to happen in Web3 when it comes to really understanding what's the need, what's the challenge uh, among users, and really build value propositions that, uh, that unlock benefits to those users. And when it comes to gaming, I think it's the perfect match between tokens and digital assets 
and those two uh, combined in a gamified entertaining experience with much more than that, I think is going to definitely be a turning point for Web3 as a whole, as it has happened with other technologies in the past, like immersive technologies or augmented reality with Pokemon Go, right. for example. I mean, we <laughs> we just saw the release of the Apple Vision Pro and literally <laughs> the the amount of like videos that i've seen of people in public like wearing these things like i'm like it's funny we're clowning it now guys but i can freaking guarantee you bro within a year or two this thing is gonna probably be a norm like i don't know i don't know that's just that's just my take um chrissy bacon a couple more questions here before we go into more broader topics right um <laughs> i love how deep on matt thumbing down um chrissy bacon I'm going to give you three terms, right? I want you to prioritize it in, in your perspective. What do you think is most important to least important? Okay. Chrissy Bacon, give me a thumbs up just so I know you're ready for this. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right. All right. So first one on the list is community. Okay. No, first one is community. The second one is revenue stream. And the third one is brand building, IP building. Out of those three, how would you rank them in order of most important to least important? Go ahead. Oh, well, I, I would say community first because they will Love define it. the branding, which is second. And all those will bring a lot of revenues to, for everyone to share in the community. There we go. See, okay. The reason why I like asking this question is because it, it shows me where your mindset is, especially when it comes to building a product in the space, right? And we've seen it time and time again. There are many grifters, many, you know, weird founders that come into this space. They claim that they want to contribute to this space, right? They claim that they want to do something cool, right? But then the moment they sell out, the moment the funds come in, there's, they're nowhere there's no product in development. There's no revenue stream back to the holders, right? So, <laughs> Chrissy Bacon, that was like the ultimate test on like how I view you as a, as a founder and you passed. Because I, I definitely agree with that order. <laughs> I'm happy I passed, Bowser. <laughs> <laughs> you passed the boss test. I need to prove it on chain, but that is the greatest, uh, you know, uh, puzzle that we have solved thanks to technology. But I just want to say that in the end, this is much this is really, really fascinating what we are enabling because in the end I've been involved with open source projects of <laughs> very boring technologies compared to what we are building in this umbrella for already, you know, six, seven years. And I have to say that the incentivization power, the reward system in a decentralized, transparent manner for contributors among communities is truly a game changer when it comes to software development. And we are going to see it first on gaming, but literally it's going to expand to every domain and we are going to see open source scale to a whole new level, although open source has built literally pretty much everything we use every day when it comes to, to anything, <laughs> literally. Right, right. For me, I just thought about if you had placed community, like number two, I can like, I can see why, but then if you put like revenue streams, like as number one, I'm like, all right, this is, this is a red flag guys. I don't know if, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I would be bullish here. Um, but no, um, Chrissy Bacon, um, with the last five minutes before we go into a more broader topic here, um, what can, what, how can, you know, my audience today, how can my community get to know more about second world, um, games and real quick, I noticed that X has been terribly, terribly performing today i literally hosted like two to three spaces this morning all of my panelists like rugged and even the spaces itself had rugged um so i'm praying to the x spaces gods that you know please do brick by brick right today um but chrissy bacon the question that i have for you is just how can how can my audience how my how can my community get to know more about second world and do you have anything um as far as february that we can look forward to to interact with or engage with well, the thing I would really, really recommend everybody is to test out our update of Second World. Um, please provide as much feedback as possible and engage in all our channels. Uh, not only, you know, in the in the more public ones, but literally having a meeting with us anytime. We are fully dogs. We are proud of, of what we are doing. And, 
And I mean, there's a lot coming up when it comes to Web3 benefits, and we are building um, a lot of gamified ways to get rewarded and contribute to, to our project. It's simply that we are actually connecting with very big communities at the time and building a, a third plan so we don't trigger the masses alone, but literally through the different Web3 communities that are signing and doing things right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Chrissy Bacon, I just want to say thank you for, again, um, allowing Second World Games. And um, I don't know what happened to your project account, but guys, if you want to put in the extra effort, which I would highly, highly appreciate it on my end, um, please go ahead and, and give Second World Games a follow. Um, again, Chrissy Bacon as well, a follow. Um, let's get into these broader topics, man. Um, one of the very first things that I wanted to talk about, and this is actually something that I'm going to be hosting, or at least co-hosting, alongside with Shiv and the team over at Mataria tomorrow. And that is just about this first come, first serve discussion, right? Um, I've been literally seeing probably some of the most spiciest takes on when it comes to first come, first serve. Um, and I myself, I'm not a collab manager. I used to be, like, back in, like, my first two to three months working in this space. And then I was like, no, nah, I can't do this anymore. Um, <laughs> but... I'm I'm curious, and, and the way I want to throw this off is actually just tossing it to my boy Yano with the beautiful, beautiful Doodles PFP. Um, Yano, first of all, welcome to the panel. Thanks for hitting that request button. And then everyone else, if you want to chime in, you know, raise that hand, or if you want, um, literally just unmute if you want to just add on to something really quick. I really don't mind. Um, but Yano, first come, first serve. Such a spicy debate going on. Do you see this something being sustainable? Uh, moving forward in Web3? And why do you think, first of all, it upsets a lot of communities? It upsets a lot of groups of people here. Go ahead. Yeah, so I guess to just dive straight into it, first come, first serve. Why is that a problem? I would say it's because teams or collab managers are taking advantage of communities for exposure and trying to funnel those, you know, pretty much over allocate i mean it's first come first serve it's over allocated but when it's extremely over allocated it's you know giving botters or people within the first come first serve the best chance of minting and just taking advantage of the communities for those little pieces of alphabet engagement hmm. easy breakdown easy to simple understand um and i agree i think it, it is used for that exposure um, I'm trying to pin up this whale thread that I read the other day, and he, he pretty much explained it on the dot. I want to hear from uh, Luna, and then we'll go to du uh, Deepo real quick. Luna, what are your thoughts on this first come, first serve thing? Go ahead. You mean for, like, mints and stuff? Yeah. Um, I'm honestly, like, I understand. So I was going to come in hot and say I think it's terrible. Um, I'll stick to that a little bit because don't want to be a flip-flopper. Like, I understand, like, that's what I said, I 100% understand, like, why you want to do it. You want to get people in, you want to get eyes on, you know, it's, it's a form of marketing. And it doesn't mean it's not valid, but also, like, if it feels bad when you're on the other side of it, and, like, maybe you did a Twitter grind or a, you know, Discord grind, and you, you're, like, really excited, and then you, you F up because you didn't, you didn't, like, send enough gas. And like that just kind of feels. I feel like that just kind of feels bad for you as a holder. And like maybe if you're, um, I don't know, bullish enough, it doesn't matter, and you'll just like insta buy on secondary. Uh, I actually not going to call any other found teams out on the stage because it's not their fault. That happened to me, and uh, that happened to me for KPR's mint. I had FCS. I had first come first serve whitelist, um, and I effed up because I was using a trippy node which wasn't connected. So I faded my own mint, and I was really mad. Jeez. I, I know. Jeez. I'm gonna play. I have to play this for you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, no. Out. Listen, boss. It, it was well deserved. I was like three months into Web three, so I didn't know what I was doing. Jeez. Oh, okay. Okay. I was I was bullish, so I bought back in. But like overall, I just the to, to, the TLDR is I think it sucks because like from a holder's perspective, people who are potential holders' perspective. You like you just get excited, and then if you don't get it, you're just kind of sad. So yeah, yeah, no, no, that, that's very true. But hey, you mentioned right now that is your first three months of, of NFTs, and dude, I didn't even. I think I the first NFT that I minted was a straight rug, and I was like, oh shit, all right, bet I'm never doing this again. Um, so you probably did a lot better than I did. Um, Luna, appreciate that take. Let's keep going around this with this microphone. Um, Depot and then Salamander. What's good, Sal? Thanks for joining the panel. Depot, go ahead. 
Uh, hello, Bossa. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Okay, I'm asking because I could barely hear uh, the other guys. I mean, Luna and Yano as well. So I think. Oh no, dude, X, work. yeah, X is X is fucking up, bro. Don't worry, don't worry. Sorry, we can hear you. Uh, I hope okay. we all can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you are in a relationship with a lady. You start supporting her from the ground up. You know, you are having her built. And yeah, let's say a few weeks to <laughs> wedding. What was that intro take? You're in a relationship with a lady? Hold on. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'm gonna let you cook. I'm gonna let you cook. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You've I'm sorry. Been Go having, ahead. You've been you've been having a build from the ground up, you know, supporting her, having a build a brand and stuff like that. Then a few weeks to the wedding, uh you go introduced to another guy who you're gonna be competing with. And this guy is not just an ordinary guy. He is a guy that is capable, you know. He's already getting the wedding suit, wedding gown, diamond rings, picture, videographers. Just name it. What not? That's how... Do you think you start a chance against that sort of man? That's how first come, first half works in the NFT space. You know, you, the little guy like me, supporting your community, supporting your project... And then a week or let's say three days, few days to the to the mean to the actual means, you are saying I should come do first confess up with a guy that's running a thousand bots. How do you how, how do you want me to compete with that kind of person? Ooh. I have never run a bot in my life, in my entire life. I've never run a single bot. So everything that I've minted when it comes to NFT has usually been, you know, me connecting my MetaMask or my Phantom Wallet, then click on Mint, and voila, I minted. So how do you want me to compete with uh, such a guy, someone that has been a bot lord, you know, running bot here and there? No, it doesn't work that way. First come, first serve is shit, and I think it should be abolished. That would be my style. Damn. I, I I feel like everyone else though is kind of agreeing with you, dude. Um, but dude, that that reference was crazy. I was so confused at first. I was like, "What?" <laughs> but no, it made sense. It made sense at the end. It made sense at the end. Let's pass it to the salamander, and then we'll work our way around the room. Um, Sal, what's up? What is up? How is everyone today? Chilling, chilling. <laughs> Welcome back. I was like, dude, you threw me off for the longest time because I was like. Your space, I thought they're on Thursdays, and now they switched to Wednesdays, and I'm like, wait, is today Monday or Saturday? <laughs> or is it Cut Tuesday? I'm like, I don't fucking know at this time. <laughs> um, but yeah, happy to be here. Dude, this is actually such a great topic, because it is pretty controversial. I have kind of a hot take here, though. Like, do you guys think that the space has an issue with first come, first serve? Like, do you think that... We're doing this because we're at the scarcity of not minting out, right? And do we define that as success? Because the problem that we're seeing in Web3 is that everybody thinks that we have to, like, we your, a project has to sell out in order to be sustainable, hence why we're doing, you know, first come, first serve in the first place. I mean, realistically, if you wanted to build a project, let it be. Let the project be. If you mint out 2,000 out of 5,000 collection, you should have already had that in the back set. Like you should have, as a founder, I think you should have already kind of had an idea. We need to continue with this project regardless of the mint. Like that will come in like, fingers crossed it's a successful mint because you have more liquidity to work with the project. But right. if you're just doing first come first serve, it's kind of like you will put a dent into the community later. And I think I'm glad that we're starting to pick this up now because it has been an issue. Right. I mean, like that's how that's been an issue. Collabs have been an issue in the past where it's like, let's just whip out 50, 50 to Kajira, 100 to Imaginary Ones, like 100 to Zuki. It's like maybe we don't even have to do that. Like maybe it could just be whoever wants to mint mints. Like, I don't know, you no, know, so I, I feel like it's like a scarcity factor. Yeah, I don't know. Like the, the, the thing that I, I pay attention to is like, why don't we just go back to public mint? And just make it this fucking degen battle of whoever gets it first gets it first. Like I don't know. I I, I would rather do. You're that. bringing me back. <laughs> You're bringing me back to let's grind for 
uh, <laughs> what was it, man? Invite thirty friends, level thirty XP, like whoever <laughs> whoever's in the Discord the longest. <laughs> Dude, those days. What was speaking. that project? Serial Club. I don't know if everyone was around when Serial Club was going on, but Jesus, dude. I remember someone reached like level 70 in Discord. I was like, holy fuck. Like, how many hours did you put in just for a whitelist spot? And then the project rugged. Ugh, no comment, no comment. Um, Sal, appreciate your take. You definitely opened up a new segment, though, that I want to keep passing around the room. Um, I'm going to go in order. I believe it was 404 that raised his hand after you and then pass it back to um yano and then matt and then david um uh, four four bro add on to the conversation go ahead yo yo can you guys hear me yes yes loud and clear awesome awesome um first of all i love the topic um i uh i'm a huge advocate of fuck first come first serve um though i understand why it's uh i guess needed for web3 um just like i believe salamander said the uh community se uh, sets him down the line uh it's going to be terrible um uh, just even thinking back to, like I said, uh, I think in a tweet yesterday, uh, 2021, um, it was rewarding to kind of fight and stay up late at night, uh, engage in farm discords when the link dropped or doing something cool on X to get a whitelist spot. Um, I'll use you guys, Shinsei, as an example. Um, what you guys did with the cryptography and the, the visual image to find the Discord invite link for like chosen role and stuff like that. Um, I feel like people are becoming lazy um, in regards to trying to find different ways to grab community attention um uh, that's just my personal take uh you know apples and oranges whatever you want to call it but i believe people are becoming lazy and uh losing creativity to try and capture that true community sentiment to where people will actually want to hold your project and not want right. to dump it on secondary just because it was over allocated like we've seen it happen like we've seen the negative backlash of it in Web3, we've seen huge whales dump projects due to shitty token allocations and things like that. So we can't just sit here and act like it's not a problem. Um, but I guess just like now, unless it's actually talked about, nothing's going to fucking change. And uh, Web2 founders and people who don't actually know about Web3 are going to come in with the same sentiment thinking, OK, we're just going to first come, first serve, over allocate and do a super hype video and uh, demo game footage of a game that's never gonna fucking come out and just disappear after mint, you know, so yeah, great topic, man. I love it uh, You definitely bring up a lot of great points. I, I want to hear from um, Yano and then we'll, we'll go to Dave and then Matt after um, Yano, what do you have to add to this? Yeah, so I guess when it comes to the marketing and community building side of things um, I would agree with uh, 404 that there's definitely lazier people out there and a lot of it's relying on engagement farming or utilizing certain bots to pretty much just push numbers and hoping that people FOMO into it. Um, but I would also agree that, I mean, not agree, but I would say that there are um, a lot of great companies and products coming into this space. So sometimes, you know, you don't really need to do all of this crazy marketing mechanics because you don't have to make, you're, you don't essentially have to make up for the lack of product that you're driving into the market, right? So there's definitely a place for each kind of thing. It's kind of just dependent on the individual tailored strategy for what is being released. Um, and, you know, like there's definitely people that have a great product or a company and they get, you know, lazy and they do the first come first serve over allocated by a million and they give one guaranteed spot and then just a shit ton of first come first serves and, right. you know, really taking advantage of people. I think that's the biggest problem. It's like it's not the issue with the first come first serve. It's the fact that you know, they're giving no first, no guaranteed spots, and then they trying to make up for it in a first come first serve. And that first come first serve gives you little to no chance. And it's like, why not just do a public? Right? So yeah, kind of just bringing back guaranteed and public, or a very un or not under all over allocated, but just a properly allocated type of first come first serve. Yana, what are your thoughts on raffles? You think we should run back raffles? Um, I'm a fan of raffles, assuming it's done right. Um, I'm just, there might be some raffles on some projects coming in the near future. So I think a lot of people like raffles. It, you know, obviously Moonbirds are the most known for having a, one of the more, most successful mints in the space. Right. And they, they did a raffle, right? Um, obviously, what happened after that, we all know. <laughs> What came from there? <laughs> CCO. Yeah. Oh, God. And then uh, that interview <laughs> and all that great stuff. But, but yeah, raffles are great. Right. Right. Yeah. There's so many, I don't know. 
there's alternatives, but we haven't tried the alternative because we're still in the middle of like figuring out what the hell do we want to do with the first come first serve. Um, let's go to David and then Brad's after and then Ledge. David, what's your take on this, man? Oh man, everybody's still talking about collabs and whitelist spots and feeling salty about uh, missing out on a mint. O- okay, um, I- I've <laughs> actually got a question and ki- kind of a question and an answer, but. You know, there, there's so many people giving their two. All of the influencers now, now all of a sudden they're collab experts and they're trying to uh, give their <laughs> advice. But, you know, um, I see so many threads about this. Like a lot of people are talking about it, but no one, no one's writing a thread or putting out a piece of content telling a normal person how to set up a bot to get in on the mint to make sure if they have a whitelist bot. I mean, bro, like I've been using bots like sniping on eBay, getting J's, even, even a PS5 during COVID. You don't. You yeah. can't get that if you're a normal person just clicking. And I'll tell you why. The cabal is suppressing it. But um, you know, back, back to back to like reality and everything. I mean, you know, like that. What matters for these companies is selling out the mint and just getting the impressions and getting the hype. Like that. That's what really matters because they can attribute that to marketing. They can attribute that to you know dollars spent on whatever it is that's coming out of their marketing campaign. And, you know, like, that's what they want. They want the hype. They want the attention. They want that that growth hacking to a community. And then afterwards, from the Mint, it's a different strategy, different funnels. And then you're going to really start building it because you already have this big base. You already have all of that attention. But, I mean, look, if, if you want to get in on the Mint, like, the bull market's coming back. Get ready to start grinding again and tell the cabal to stop pre- suppressing the threads and set up a bot. Like, bro, come on. Like, everybody's bought Jays. I don't even win the Jays on, on the app anymore. I got to buy them, you know, over <laughs> retail. I'm buying them off the nice. secondary. Like, I, I want them to let me set up a bot. Like, they're making it harder. We, we still got it easy in Web3. Dude, that just reminds me of, like, Supreme. Like, back when Supreme was the shit and, like, everyone just kept sniping the hell out of these box logos. Dude, I never got my hands on one because of those damn bots. Um, But you bring up a really great point, right? How come there isn't no thread on... All right, if you're upset about these first come first serve spots, let me teach you how to set up a bot. Like that's that's actually fact. That's a great point. I'm gonna throw it back to Yana real quick because I know he wants to add something. And then Brad's ledge. Um, Yana, what's good? Yeah, talking about uh, the whole collab situation. You know, I might know a thing or two about what's going <laughs> going on with all this. But um, but yeah, I mean, when it comes comes to the whole botting situation, you know, um. I guess like the last people, last thing these projects want as well is like people fighting over the last spots with a bot. Um, I mean, it all just comes down to a lot of recent drama and coming to these spots, right? Like certain teams, certain projects, you know, either taking people's spots and using them for maybe some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. But, um, you know, it's just like a variety of negative situations that have come into play recently. Um, and a lot of people are starting to to speak out about it, right? They're either not happy about some sort of allocation. Um, you know, maybe they don't get a response quick enough. Maybe they feel like they got strung along. Or maybe they just, you know, feel like that they were done dirty or feel like because of the price of their PFP, they deserve a spot, right? So it's, uh, you know, it's a whole situation that is kind of been in the space for a very, very long time. But because of all of the recent antics that have been going on with the collaborations and people taking advantage or people feeling unheard you know there's a lot of quote-unquote white knights or just people talking out about the subject so yeah that's kind of uh what i'm seeing on the timeline we need to change i think i think think that's what needs to happen right um but hey david and yano and everyone else has brought up really great points so i'm seeing both sides i'm seeing both sides but hey before i go to these hands i want to go to the people that i invited specifically to be on the panel today um, and that is, I want to hear from Sanjay and Future Sight. I'm going to go to Sanjay first and then Future Sight. Sanjay, brother, you, first of all, you've been partnering, you just partnered up with Palio AI. So huge fucking congratulations. I have to throw that up, right? Um, <laughs> but here's my thing, Sanjay. It's like, dude, why can't, why doesn't everyone just become a gaming content creator and then you get yourself a guaranteed spot? Like, <laughs> let's, let's, let's just be honest here. Like, all these projects, all these hype gaming projects, they partner up with a lot of these creators, but it's because people like Sanjay, people like Alyssa, right? They have that gaming audience that these gaming projects want, right? So 
again, guys, there's loopholes to this. You don't always have to be quote unquote complaining, right? But Sanjay, what are your just general thoughts on like this first come first serve thing? And I, I know you yourself very, very heavy into gaming, even outside of Web3, but general thoughts on just this first come first serve allocation. Yeah, first of all, thank you for having me. And, you know, um, panels was uh, going back and forth, so I didn't want to jump in just randomly. But uh, I think um, I think first first come first serves. It, it's like it's like uh, you know it's like um, I don't really support it in so many ways because I like I want to support or I want to provide these uh, you, these exclusive spots to people who are here day in and day out. Right? They're not here just gonna. Uh, they're not just gonna like max out their uh, for, for example their um, wallet gas fees or something and just overrun or just front run everybody else uh, who does not know how to max out their gas fees or or maybe doesn't have the yeah, uh, um, enough amount of gas to even spend to max it out on the gas fees, right? So it's like there's so many loopholes. Like right. David was just mentioning, there's so many ways for people to kind of uh, people who are just you know uh, very extractive. They just want to like jump in there and just take all the spots for themselves. You know, you can set up bots. You can you can mess around with your gas fees. People are also like minting it. it on the uh, on the smart contracts, so, like Ether Scan, you can mint the NFTs there. Um, yes. There's so many ways this FCFS doesn't work, and then people who have been grinding. I know, like uh, you know, there's some sp there's some NFT collections. For example, Ember, right? There were so many people doing amazing threads. You know, like uh, like not not huge creators, but just community members who were writing up threads so they could be noticed by the team or the collab managers, so then they can get a spot for themselves, and then. And then, you know, like, I think Ember did a good, good job, fairly, fairly a good job. But if there was a first come first serves only type of, uh, type of like, you know, uh, whitelist, then none of those people would win, you know, like they're putting in the work, mm -hmm. but then somebody who just knows how to run a bot or probably already has a bot, which a lot of people do, they can just come in and just can grab like 10 spots, uh, 10 spots of the rip. So right. again, as a creator, uh, you know, now, especially since like, just like last month, right? Like started up a community and just trying to like build this community. Shout out to Palio for working with us. You know, they've given us all, all, all uh, uh, guaranteed spots and stuff. And there's more projects coming in. There's like three more projects going to be announced this week, all guaranteed spots. And all these guaranteed spots will be given to like people who show in, uh, show up every day, right? It's mm -hmm. not going to be just randomly, uh, like, you know, drawn from like Twitter, follow RT, and then I'll pick a <laughs> comment or something, comment picker. Yeah. Like, sure, I'll, you know, sure, we'll pump up numbers, we'll do the follow, a like RT, all that stuff too. But then again, we will make sure we pick out the people who are most active. Or maybe we'll have extra spots for uh, for active people versus, you know, we do want to give some raffles and stuff, you know, make it a little uh, fun and like, you know, a luck luck based as well. But definitely not majority of the spots will not be going to luck based uh, uh, luck based uh, raffles anymore. At least this right. is what we are doing. Me, Alyssa, uh, you know, rated a uh, YP. At least this is what we are doing. And uh, I hope more creators, I hope more uh, alpha groups and more alpha communities do that as well but yeah that's what that takes andre thoughts. and dude congrats again on the palio partnership i, I literally and then you like dude you raiden yp Alyssa. like whenever i see an announcement on your on the timeline i'm like here we here we go again these guys are fucking killing it um dude sanjay i love it bro um let, let's go to breads real quick i want to hear from breads um and then we'll, we'll keep working with around this room breads what's your take on this man yo how's it going man great space so far um well, I just couldn't help but think about the types of audiences you attract through the method that you distribute whitelist. By the way, you've, you've inspired me to uh, make this my topic tonight for, for Space so. Info, you and Will's tweet. Um, so excited to continue the conversation. But I guess it, I would just want to call to attention that you know each person and project and team has to decide what kind of audience they want. You know, do they want flippers to generate volume? Do they want diamond hands? And you can have an entire audience of diamond hands, but if it's not right. trading and it's not on the home screen, then you're going to lose interest over time. You know, True. even if you True. have, a, you know, a solid community. So, True. you know, I think you just got to boil it down to like, what do they want to accomplish? Generally, I think it's going to be a healthy mix of everything. And yeah. I, I, you know, I think like a raffle is a good way actually. Um, but yeah. again, you probably need multiple methods to attract multiple people. 
it does feel bad though when you do see those people like putting in hours and hours into discord or whatever you want to call it grinding right and then they literally just get beat by bot like i personally feel bad for this type of people and the worst part is these spots they get into the hands of flippers people who actually don't give a crap about your project and you know what i'm saying like you then thus your core initial audience that you've built upon launch is a bunch of flippers people who don't even really care about you know, said game or said product, you know, Brad's bring up a really good point. By the way, I, I uh, Brad's, I know you host your spaces in a couple hours. Um, dude, I, I forgot, I forgot the times. If you want to show at the very end, please go ahead and do so. Um, let's go to ledge real quick and then go to David. And then, um, I want to hear from future site ledge. What's up? What's your take on this? Hey, you know, there's, um, some really good points have been brought up and, you know, I agree with, with some of them disagree with some of them. Uh, but I think, I think a big thing to note is that, we really, there is no best solution, but also to realizing that every project is different, every meta is different, and um, we don't have to have just one way to do something like just raffles or just, you know, just through the collabs. So I like the idea of the variety and also making it just very unique towards what the project is, how many, what the supply is, who's a part of it, who the project, or who the, you know, who the founders are. So I think all of that kind of factors in. But when it comes to things that I personally like and dislike, um, I think on paper, certain things sound good, where it's like the raffle system sounds good on paper, where it's like everyone gets a chance, everyone has an opportunity, but then people in Web3 ruin it, just like anything else, because they're like, oh, I'm going to have 100 alt accounts. I'm going to have an option of you know, buying, buying something to be able to set up, just automatically put in 100 wallets or 200 wallets, 300 wallets, whatever it is. Right. So then, you know, the person who, like, I'm not doing I'm just like, I'm just not, don't, I don't even think of it, right? I'm like, okay, one entry, okay, there we go. But then everyone always tries to come out a way to cheat the system. Also, too, when it comes to getting a whitelist spot with uh, collabs, that sounds great on paper, but then we see these projects that the team takes 90% of what they get and they give like one or two to their community. Uh, but And then, you know, the idea, so all these ideas sound good, first come, first serve sounds good, except then you basically don't have an opportunity unless you have a bot. So all these things communities and founders try and come up with, Web3 ruins it for so, for so many times, so they have to come up with new ways. Uh, even too, it's like my personal favorite way is just going into a Discord, none of the grinding, none of like the two, you know, having like 50K text messages, because also there's a million, you know, you can have a bunch of accounts with that too. So I like going into VC, turning my camera on, having genuine engagement with people, having great oh, yeah. networking, come up with, you know, be, and then also too, when a founder or mods, they come into the VC, you can't have an alt account when you have your camera on. They get to know you as a person of who you are and what you're building. And not only it, uh, does it help getting a white, like a great way to get a whitelist spot for a single project, but also it's more long term than that. That's why I've made a lot of my personal connections with people throughout the space long term is just by going into a project and getting to know people and who they are. And it's not just saying the only way to get whitelist is by doing engagement and get these points or you have to win the Smash Cards game. You know, it's, it, there's lots of different ways. People who like to play games, play some games, play do some tournaments, but then also don't only give it to those people or only mm -hmm. give it to the people who are doing fan art. Have a variety of ways. Give it to some people who are hanging out and see their camera on. Give it to some people who are winning games. Also the application meta. It, on paper, it sounds great for the people who are builders and founders. They don't have time to be in a Discord for that long, so they can do the application. But then we have chat GTP where everyone's just bullshitting it. So it's, <laughs> I think, you know, just kind of like everything sounds great, but then we have to kind of figure out ways around it to say, well, how can we not have all the bots or not have right. everyone who's doing alt accounts? So it's just, you know, I think it's just having to get creative and there's no perfect way, but... My favorite's the VC camera way. So I hope that meta comes back soon. <laughs> yes, bring that back, please, dude. I miss when Discord was that lit. Um, mm -hmm. Ledge, thank you for an amazing take. I'm going to pass it to David, and then we'll go to Sanjay right afterwards. David, what's good? Yeah, I, I actually agree uh, completely with Ledge. Like, I think there should always be uh, a variety of options because you want a variety of different types of community members. Like, you don't want everybody, you know, if you're a gaming community, you don't want a whole bunch of you know, striving to be professional hardcore gamers. You you want like a casual aspect. You you want a really good mix of you know different people who are interested in what you're doing. But um, I, I actually had a question for Sanjay. Like when you're going um by uh for for what you said that you were doing, like 
rewarding people for creating and staying engaged. What do you think is, is the best way to do that? Because, you know, if you're, if you're trying to do a contest for creating content, like there's always going to be people who don't win that may feel like their content's better. And then mm. as the project, you know, as the project founder, like, it's almost a kick in the nuts to tell someone, hey, make better content, try harder <laughs> next time. Like, right. I'm kind of curious what you do. Sanjay, go ahead. Yeah, David, great question. And to be honest, you know, I didn't realize this, what you just said, until last month, until when I started my own Discord and when they, I saw there's like these... So so in, 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 in Web3, right, like... We can we can argue this, but I think there are no real, uh, you know, like true real gamers yet who are just playing the game for the fun of it, right? Most of us are adults here, and people uh, adults uh, who are here for you know specific reasons, whatever those reasons might be. And I think just gaming itself for fun, majority of the people that's not their goal, right? So when they put effort into something let's say writing a thread or making a video or doing a play test or like a game night or being part of a, an event like ledge was mentioning just now which which i agree with right different types of ways to kind of participate to get a whitelist or something and they don't win which i which which i've been seeing in my discord which is not even big yet it's only like 1500 people and i'm already seeing these people are like oh my god i tried so good i tried so hard but i didn't win i've been trying for last three weeks and I missed every single uh, whitelist or whatever right and I feel like as I feel like a founder who's just like who's who's failed you know like who's failing these people who are showing up every day and every night to kind of support the support the projects which I bring to them right I think the only the only thing which keeps me you know like uh, sane and like you know lets me go forward is is that I think the space is amazing and there is many projects building and there's always going to be more opportunities, right? You know what they say, the luck favors people who show up every day. So that's something I, I really believe in. Like, you know, I come in every day. I talk about projects every day. I, I make content every day. And, you know, sometimes I lose, sometimes I win. So I think that's something we have to, we have to kind of like believe in. And, um, and uh, and any any normal person, same people will also understand that I think. So it is sad, but but you know there is literally no other way. But what we can do is now have kind of like increased my prize pool. Let's say right now I'm not just only giving whitelists and giveaways, but I'm also giving chunk of my own uh, revenue where where I'll do like monthly uh, content campaigns or quests where people will be like blah 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 write a thread with hashtag spectrum or write a video or make a video with hashtag spectrum make some more contest so that way we can give back to the community even more because i think there is because the, the space is still very small and there's still a lot more to go around so uh, we we should do it as long as we can do it huge 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 appreciate that take sanjay let's hear from future site and then we'll go to depot afterwards future site thoughts man so many things have been said go ahead yeah, I mean, look, it's it's hard to add to so much amazing conversation, actually. I um, really loved what uh, Sanj and Ledge and others were saying. Um, I think ultimately what this kind of falls down to is, do you want to reward people who have integrity? Um, do you want to reward people who believe in your project and follow its vision? Or do you want to kind of um, provide access to people who are there uh, to take the bag and run or to take advantage of systems that they may have closer access to than other users. And I think it's been said before that that leads to some really negative um, fallout for people. You know, Luna, look, I'm sorry for the KPR. There was a first come, first serve component and you missed out on that. I'm glad you stuck with us. I think we proved our, that, <laughs> our worth. Um, but those kind of mechanisms um, really do promote a kind of predatory relationship to one another and to projects. And, and I just think that it is um, unnecessary if, if we move away from this need to over-financialize the space and the mint um, and, and this sense that the mint has to be all about this like spark of hype that just generates momentum for a project. And it's basically seen as the, the energy you have at mint is the only energy you're going to get for the next six months, right? And so it's kind of, um, 
I think the slow build effect is more effective, like Ledge was talking about. You know, let's think about other models. You can do it where you're only handing out 10, 10 mints every couple of days to the people who are proving that they're there for the right reasons, right? Or you could maybe, if you wanted to generate a bit of hype, you do an open edition that's open for 34, 35 minutes to an hour, right? So anybody who wants it can get it because they've been paying attention and they're there. There's different ways to do it. But I think first come, first serve just ultimately becomes abused both as a marketing tool, as a predatory flipping tool, as a just a, it just leaves a sour taste in everybody's um, mouths. And I think we can kind of move beyond the idea that mints are just all about this, this so-called attention economy, because ultimately the attention right. economy is taking away from real projects, building real things for, for real reasons and vision. And I think we need to think longer term than just how can we get in a mint and how much money are we going to make from it? Absolutely. Let's hear from Debo. Debo, what's good? I'm good, brother. Uh, I think um, my network doesn't want me to be here. I mean, my network provider. <laughs> it's X, bro. Trust me. It's not your network. network. It's X. <laughs> yeah. And if you are, you know, if you can hear some giggles, I'm sorry about that. I've got my two kids with me. Shout out, little Depot. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, boss up. Really, I really respect everyone that has spoken before me, but I think we are just scratching the surface. And I want us to, you know, to to dive deep into what's actually causing the problem. And there, there are a few things that I would like to talk about. Um, number one will be incentives, and number two, marketing agency. Uh, number three, advisors. See, I I might not understand business a lot, but I believe that in building a product, you have to build for a community. You don't build something, then you start looking for community or customers. You build a community first, then your community dictates what product they actually want, mm. which I would like to throw a question around. We all support low means, I mean, low supply collections, but due to the, uh, the, the, the law of demand and supply, you know, to create some scarcity, but how scarce is scarce enough? That would be my first question. And this is an open question to everyone. How scarce do you think is scarce enough? Are we talking 2,500 uh, collections? Or are we talking 5,000? Are we talking 10,000? That's one. And why do you think these um, uh, projects goes for the low supply collections? They are being advised by some marketing agency to create scarcity and some so-called advisors. If you can remember, boss, I, I, I posted out a tweet that what is the role of an advisor in Web3 and what are the criteria they are using in selecting them? Because... There are some shitty projects out there. I'm not going to name names. And there are so many shitty advisors out there as well because I actually don't know what they're advising. I really don't know. And now when it comes to incentives, I'm going to ask you guys another question. How many gamers, I mean, actual gamers, probably content creators, you know, gamers that are real gamers, not someone that are just playing games for fun. But these are guys that are creating content. Now, how many of these guys are, or let me say, were able to mint these games? I mean, the so-called Web3 games. How many of them? And you know what? Just few of them. Let's say we have 10,000 gamers, uh, a content creator, uh, which are gamers. Only 500 of them were able to mint. And you know what? Because these guys, they are not looking to incentivize the actual people that really need to be incentivized. They are looking to, you know, reward whales, flippers, and whatnot. So the problem we are having today boils down to three things. Incentives, marketing agency, some are good. I could name a few that are good. And then the advisors. Because the Web3 project, the so-called Web3 project, don't really know how this space operates. And they go to marketing agency, they go to advisors to actually, you know, guide them, guide their path. But these are the guys that are just looking after their pockets. They are not looking to advise this project to do the right thing. I don't really know if they actually know the right thing. Yeah, I don't really know. 
You know, what's funny, Debo, is I mentioned this in the space, right? Um, and we guys, we're, we're going to be wrapping up very soon. I, I wanted to go a little bit more, a bit more over the hour just to fill in all the questions. But um, I just want to say again, thank you to everyone who's been tuning into today's space. Um, again, for those who have been attending Brick by Brick in the past, I usually go for like two, three hour long spaces. But I will say this, oh. ever since I got... Ever two, three since hours. I got, dude, our bread, no, dude, bread's nose is for Five, sure. six hours for like at five, least. Five, six hours minimum. Um, <laughs> anyways, anyways, guys, ever since I got swamped with more spaces um, throughout my days, I, I had to like figure something out and I figured... Let's just break these hour-long spaces into multiple episodes. Um, so you're going to be seeing a lot more brick-by-brick brick episodes in the coming weeks, coming months. Um, just playing around with the different formulas here, right? Um, but Debo, what I want to say to you to take, though, I know you asked a question to the panel, but like I said, I want to wrap up, right? Um, one thing that we are doing at, at Project Shinsei, and then I love that Matt actually came up with, uh, he came up with this idea, and is literally just purging the Discord like once a month. And, and like maybe even twice a month sometimes. And what that actually does is like we get rid of people who haven't sent a message since like a month ago. And then we, we, we send another Discord invite out and we bring in new faces into the community. And it's kind of like this rinse and repeat process where you, you get rid of old people that weren't really in the, the community for the right reasons. And then we, we f replace them with people who actually do want to show the support. Right. And so, again, I feel like what we have to do with communities, I mean, I know the topic was on first come first serve allocation, but it, it goes back to who are we going to who do we want the initial core audience to be for these projects? Right. Like literally future site touched up on it so well, like we're building the foundation, the first 1000 true loyal fans of XIP of X project and how you go about it, how who you let in. Who you let hold the NFT determines everything about the project moving forward. So yes, you might sell out, right? Which is a great, great form of measure of success, right? But what comes afterwards, in my opinion, which is even more important than selling out, is how are you going to sustain your current community that you've built upon launching, right? Um, and again, guys, this... This is, I'm probably going to be on, on an open-ended take here, but this is something that I would definitely love to explore in the near future. Um, this has been an amazing, an amazing, quick, very quick, insightful space. Um, I'm going to throw a round of applause to everyone here. Um, again, guys, thank you to Crispy Bacon. Shout out to Second World Games for sponsoring today's space. Um, please show love to Crispy Bacon and, and what he's building over there. And guys, uh, little some alpha. I am going to be collaborating with Persona Journey this Friday, I'm going to be hosting a space, another brick by brick space this Friday with them. Uh, we're going to be talking about IP building, brand building, uh, because they're going to be revealing their art very soon. So expect a bunch, a bunch of more collaborations with these fire upcoming projects. Um, and guys, I would usually typically play music as an outro, but because of the time allocation and I want to respect everyone's time here, I'm just going to cut it off right here. Thank you, Chrissy Bacon, Sanjay, David, Brad's Depot, Feature Site, Ledge. Um, Matt, all the people who are up, up once on the stage, thank you for making today's space very, very insightful, very, very quick. Um, and guys, I am Bossa. Let me play this. It has been my pleasure hosting you all, and I will see you guys later on this week. Peace out.